Hi all, hi Paul as well. Just want to do a quick update in regards to my electrolytic cell. At this stage, the process has been operating for 41 hours approximately. Um, as you can see, the rust has started to settle out of this, so it's made a deposit on the bottom here. As far as I can understand, that's um, iron chloride there. However, that is yet to be determined. Over this side here um, is the sodium hydroxide side. So hopefully, um, from everything I understand, as long as it keeps bubbling, there is still salt to be used up in that electrolytic cell um, through half reaction. So it should be producing sodium hydroxide every time we see the bubbles. So it's still bubbling there at the moment. Of course, um, it has slowed down. However, I prefer to try and react all the salt water solution instead of leaving any left, um, as that will be a, a deposit in the bottom of my air still once I've processed it through the air still. Um, I prefer to be able to just process 100% sodium hydroxide. I'm not sure whether that's going to be possible yet, but at this stage, the best way to do that is just to keep monitoring it um, to see whether it is bubbling, and it is still bubbling there, so you can see the bubbles that are on it. Um, you can see the little bubbles there as well, so it is still reacting with salt that's in the water. And at this stage, I'm just going to continue to run it until I'm confident that all the salt has been used up. Now, yesterday I was going to make an update on this. I didn't. I took one cup of water from each. So I took one cup from the sodium hydroxide side. I took one cup from the iron chloride side, which was a complete disaster. Um, it's the last time I use iron rods to do electrolysis with. Um, as you can see, that's why you don't do it. It's purely because it produces... Um, so much rust in that side, so much oxidation. So next time what I'll do is I'll let this run its course and then I'm going to remove these iron rods and I'm going to replace them with more carbon rods. So that's more of these carbon rods here. I did notice some very interesting um, observations yesterday as well in regards to this. Uh, one was it was acting as a battery at the same time as it was acting as an electrolytic cell. So yes, that is a battery anyway. However, it was adding 0.9 of a volt to the top of the electrolytic cell. So from the battery that's just over here, as you can see there, it's connected to those solar panels. That was putting out 12.4, 12.56 volts. And then I would measure it up here and I was getting 13.5 or 13.46 volts approximately. And what it was, if I measured it from this point, is it was producing almost a volt of charge as an electrolytic cell like you would in your dry cell batteries and stuff like that. And then because it's all connected up here, so you can see the wiring I've got connected here from one to the copper cell there, to the carbon rod. Man, it is, it is loud out here. I've got budgies going mad up in this tree over here. I've got an aeroplane going past over here and I've got these dogs doing whatever it is that dogs do. So a lot of noise, I apologize for the noise. Now, um, so, it was acting as a battery, which is exactly what it should do in all circumstances. Um, there is always, you know, a way to generate power from an electrolytic cell like this. However, the further I push the process, the more power I'm going to generate it, generate from it as an electrolytic cell. So if you were to get a few of these in series and connected them up with wires, um, you could increase that from the 0.9 volt to 1.8 volt plus 0.9 on top all the way up to 2.7 etc um, until you get up to whatever voltage you require um, and if you've got a 12 volt device in all in all theory you should be able to connect it straight to a, um, a positive and a negative terminal and you should generate enough current and electricity off it to operate the device depending on the wattage of course so the wattage is only very small um, so at this stage here you can see there's a lot of corrosion there's obviously a lot of corrosion on this side a lot of oxidation i'm going to leave that side as it is i'm not even interested in collecting the chloride off that side this time however this side i am extremely interested in getting the best reaction possible and the way i'm going to achieve that is by removing this lid here i'm going to clean up these rods and remove all the white build up that's on there see and then by doing that i'm going to re-expose the iron and put them back into the solution and hopefully that gives it a better opportunity to actually process the remaining salt that's in that half of the electrolytic cell. As you can see, it's one that's just cleaned up. 
why rubber is. All the white material off it. it exposes the iron beneath. Gives it better contact. Now, from what I understand, this is either sodium bicarbonate or sodium carbonate, or possibly sodium hydroxide. Though, yeah, this is what happens when you try to do chemistry when you're not a chemist. You really have no idea what you're doing, but it's all a learning curve. And that's it. The rods are—they're not perfect by any means, but they're a lot cleaner than what they were. Hopefully that makes better contact with the solution or the electrolyte. Now, as you can see, there is quite a bit of that white material that's floated to the bottom. So all of that white material that is on the bottom, it will be collected separately. So it will be processed separately um, as it may be sodium bicarbonate or sodium carbonate. I still have no way of determining that yet. I do have litmus paper on the way. Um, litmus paper should be able to tell me whether it's acidic or whether it's alkaline. Um, hopefully that arrives within the next few days. It must also be said that with the cup that I pulled out of each of these, so I pulled one cup out of the top of this, I pulled one cup out of the top of the iron chloride side, I um, did process that. So I put it through the air still, I reduced it down into a solid form, and then I did attempt to mix it with oil to see if there was an exothermic reaction. I mixed it with water first, and there was no exothermic reaction. Um, so it's still very saturated in salts. Uh, I did leave it overnight to see if it would blend, and it, it has not blended, so it was another failure. So at this stage here, the only thing I can do is let the process run longer. Um, if by any means, after a few days, um, this all stops bubbling and I process it and it fails again. Well, so be it. We'll have to go back to the drawing board and try again because at this stage here I'm very successful at creating chloride, especially when I remove the iron rods from it um, By using the copper rods by installing a few more copper rods in there. I'm definitely successful at making chloride However, chloride was not the product I was chasing. What I really want to try and make is the sodium hydroxide so if for any reason you happen to be a chemist um, some advice on this would be fantastic or if for any reason perhaps you know a chemist um, it would be absolutely awesome if you could share this video with them um, and see if they've got any suggestions on how I can better improve this because ultimately what I really want to do is I want to make soap from seawater um, through the process of electrolysis and if I can do that it would be absolutely fantastic. Um, at this stage that's the update for today. Um, we'll let it run its course and hopefully in the next couple of days I can do another update for you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye.